hello. Ladies, ladies. ladies <laughs> Just ladies. the ladies tonight. Ladies, how are we? What's up, everybody? I bet we're doing great. Yeah, we're back uh, again. Folks, episode... I almost said 57. <laughs> 76. I don't know 76. where my brain Commitment. was. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, baby. I like it. We're getting up there, um, right? Gonna hit like three it. digits Deep. soon? Get Deep. some. Folks, you're listening to the Producer Lounge. This is our show. This is our podcast brought to you by Always 400. Shouts. Uh, we're just going to sit here and talk <laughs> about music production shit the whole time. That's the, uh, that's the vibe. Mm-hmm. And today we have a very special guest. That's right. Please welcome hi. Plum Charlie. Hi, hi, hi. Woo! What is up, my man? Good to have you here, buddy. Good to have you here. It's been a while since we've all kicked it. And a now minute, we get to absolutely. Right. Long time. I was thinking the last time was um, um, the subs up. What's the place up in Boulder? KMG. KMG. Oh. Yeah. KMG. Oh, was, that was like KMG the last time one. I was like Dude, out yeah. of the out of the the basement, man. Yeah. <laughs> we had like what? It was only <laughs> like three Love sessions up there in Boulder or something, right? Bro, I've uh, yeah, man. I've just been like basement basementing hard. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Uh, get that. That's oh, a putting in you know, some work. That's basement. the type of people we like on this mm-hmm. podcast. Base, mm-hmm. People that base a basement hard, yo. Yeah, Dude, basement so right. hard. That's basement right. hard as fuck. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we tell our audience constantly they need to stay in there. Stay in the basement. That's it's man. Yeah. You gotta just grind that shit out for a long time. And then and then for a while it was like the, it was like grand opening, oh grand closing again. Yeah. I know, right? Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. And then they, then it uh, it officially happened where like was I was like, Oh, actually I don't really care anymore. Like I, I went through like the whole gambit of like the emotions of like I don't want anybody telling me what to do. And then it was like <laughs> drinking whiskey by myself in the basement. Then I, then I got had therapy and kind of yeah. <laughs> like went through, <laughs> yeah. went through the, you know, instead of the doing some, some Zoom therapy. And then, you know, and mm. then it was all great. Oh, good. So, good. Yeah. yeah. Got my mental health back. It works. It works That's that good. well, huh? That's good. Quick. Uh, I still do it, man. I still got my regular Thursday. Shout out to shout Dr. Out. Tuck. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of shouts, shout out to Arizal Shizzle. Oh, A Rizzle, A C, A Rizzle. Welcome whoa, to the whoa. party, okay, buddy. I see. A Rizzle, Shizzle. Yep. On these shouts, we got amazing. that boy, A Rizzle, Shizzle. One, two, three. Shouts, uh, King Julian Music. Shouts, we see you. And z- oh, Z Z Top. No, Z Y G L R O X. Oh, Zig. Zyglorox. 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 Crazy ass name. I feel like I've seen this dude around Twitter. Ziggle Ziggorox. Ziggorox. Shout out. regular. Shout out. Very nice. Yeah. Good to yeah. see you. Got Good a to regular. have you. What up, Ziggle? Um. <laughs> um, yeah, man. It's it's honestly that's a that's a strange thing about like mental health and therapy and all these things. Yeah. Is like even when you are in a good state, it's not like a bad move no, to have a therapist sure. once oh, a week where yeah. you just fucking talk about some shit. And and it's it's like it's it's like just going in there. Well, it, you know when you when you just kind of like are kicking in with your boys or whoever you would talk to that that are like your people, they're good kinda. Yeah, right. but they're right. kind of also that's, not good. That's you know what right, I mean? It's like the right way you're like it. I'm pretty sure that advice you just gave me was the absolute yeah. wrong thing to do right. with my shit. That's the storybook advice. You I don't know? want the storybook advice. I want yeah. the fucking yeah, that's like, street sauce. advice. Like help right. me work through my shit. So it, yeah, it was mm-hmm. my first time that I ever did it, and and um, then my wife started doing it too, and it was kind of like good for the marriage too. Because oh, know. good. Yeah. Anyway, That's dope. not to That's take music yeah. production down towards. You this know, is therapy, actually the Therapy Lounge podcast, yeah. ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Therapy yeah. Lounge. This this is the uh, extra gay <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Shout extra out mental m- uh, mental health. Yeah. <laughs> mental I almost health. said mental illness because that's the Zach Fox thing. I should have just said that. Shout out mental yeah. illness. <laughs> um, whatever, yeah. I mean, we're when all when you have a Ill. when you're mentally tight up there, yeah. you make mentally tight beats. Mm. You make better music. Oh. Well, that was kind of like the only escape. That was like the only escape part. You know, it, mm. I was just like I had nowhere else to go but like into the music. Right, and it was oh, like yeah. I, w- I w- like channel. I would sauce. draw into that shit, and you know, so yeah, trying totally. to find some balance because you know everything right needs right. balance right for sure. Totally. Yeah, we also all kind of went a little crazy. 
That's when true. we were forced I, to stay in our fucking houses. Collectively, for, yeah. everybody had some version of oh yeah, kind of some trauma that they're going to have. Some people are worse than others. Yeah, I mm-hmm. still see some people in their car yeah, with a the mask weak on. ones, the, right? Mm-hmm. You know, they're still. I'm like, wow, it's hard to kind of get some people so back terrified, out. guys. Come on, come on now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> but you know, um, yeah. Collectively, we're all right. We're all still here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know. But my man, sure. so oh, we're here. what have you been up to? It's been so long. I'm sure you got some some knowledge to drop on us. What, yeah, have, what have you been playing around with? Um, well, so I mean, since we're kind of on the theme, like, uh, so like the the thing for me was I, I also w- was kind of working from home too. Like I'm a UX designer on my around like my day gig, so I ma- I design software, mm. and so oh, wow, and okay. so like I I was like designing software, and then I I kind of went through this phase where I was like, I I really don't want to be on the computer all day, and then do music on the computer mm-hmm. all day. Mm-hmm. So I kind of went through this path of uh, I just I was like I think I got to get out of the computer. And so I just like went just heavy into this like modular, <laughs> you know, Eurorack shit. Oh, cool. Fuck Gassed cool. out on it hard, bought a bunch of shit, oh, sold yeah. a bunch of shit. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, That's what that. everybody does. It's, it, I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but, but then I, and, it, and I think part of what's fun for me with it too is like there's the design element of right. like, if it just did this one thing, it would solve all my problems. And then you right. get it oh. and you're just like, it didn't solve my problems. No. <laughs> the but, trap. But, but, but the fun part about it is like I, f- I feel like um, I feel like it creates this sense of random happy accidents oh, sure. that I don't have to do with the mouse. Hmm. And it kind of like it changed how I think of, on the computer about like totally just things like LFOs or yeah. things yeah. like, okay. you know, um, okay. like I hate drawing automation. And so yeah, it was that's like, fair. well, I, you know, now I can automate with LF, or with like different modulation sources and then like kind of tripping out about like everything is a, um, everything is an automation source. God damn right. Like every, every single everything, little knob. Like, well, pitch. Everything should be. Everything uh, is, with control voltage. Yeah, yeah. Like everything is a, a totally. auto, you know, it's yeah. like. A pitch sequence that is actually creating something through like one volt per octave is also a thing that is like making drums or, you know, so like everything becomes connected and there is no like linear mm. path flow and just like tripping out on that stuff became, and it all just kind of becomes sample fodder that I just like to chop up anyway. Oh, but yeah. Like that, anyway, the, the, sh- the, the, the of short course. of it is like that mm-hmm. became like my obsession for those two years of just like, yeah. Must plug this thing, and and really, all I needed to really do was just buy a standing desk. Like <laughs> I, th- I think, I think I was like, well, I, you know, if I just bought a standing. You learned desk, a bunch maybe. of fun things, yeah. and you got oh, some yeah. nice little you tools to out of the deal. Yeah. yeah. What DAW are you using? So I still use Ableton. Um, Ableton, I still feel like is like the main instrument. It's like Ableton and voice is probably my main stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But. Uh, I've I was kind of like really heavy in push on the, on the using the push right, for everything. Right. Oh, nice! And that then I like started fun. just like feeling like I'm like the latency that I feel when I'm yeah. finger drumming is it's just enough to make me not like it. Yeah, hundred percent. And when you step to like a like an electron box or something like a dig attack or a syntact or something, and then go back to it, it now wow. feels like more <laughs> foreign to me to sure. to. Uh, to chop on push anymore. Mm-hmm. The only mm-hmm. thing that I really like to use to push for anymore these days is just to kind of like zoom in and finally chop the samples and then oh, okay. drop mm-hmm. them in a drum rack and and kind of take you, stuff. That you I have make. like a decent flow on it for chopping samples up. Um, I think my well, I, I mostly I try. I'm, I'm I do I don't use a ton of MIDI anymore. Like well, push obviously kind of puts things, some things back into You mean like or, synths, like soft yeah. synths and things like that? I mean, I guess I still do kind of, but um, I try to bounce to audio as quick as possible. Just we do I just Beautiful. In, I just we enjoy, definitely do that as well. I enjoy mm-hmm. working with audio better. Mm-hmm. Um, Same. So. Have you heard the good news of Bitwig? <laughs> I have, but didn't, didn't they just do some <laughs> kind of update? 
that like the community they started corrected shit they corrected themselves. oh they course corrected yeah, yeah. oh what they was the thing I within that three on days that. yeah they, oh was that they, when you guys uh, were no, trying it was like to five days. Is that so when they guys released yeah. a spectral yeah. pack yeah that and then has they tried to four different spectral splitters yeah. for 80 bucks and everyone was like no yeah. We should we should pull Even though them up at some point. They're I, fucking amazing. I would have spent money on it. Like, oh yeah, they're sick. Dude. Yeah. Wait, was, it, was the community but, butthurt about the price? Or yeah, they were yeah, butthurt was, about just the buying it in general. But general. people really? were uh, yeah. well, the the main thing that I, I heard this cat named Baphometrics talk about was he was saying I already pay for the the plan yearly right. to get automatic updates. Correct. And so um, if I'm paying for the automatic automatic updates. And you want me to buy this other thing, but it, it wasn't advertised that way. I think I feel like that was the sure. the, the biggest. Regardless mm-hmm. of that, mm-hmm. with your Super modular level. headspace, you would love Bitwig. Bitwig, you can is amazing. You can add modulators to literally everything. Y'all have jumped ship, huh? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was about, it was Dude, about ten have, months ago. They left yeah, me all alone over. It's over a year. It's over. It's over a year now. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. it was like July remember. last year. When yeah, we jumped. Sounds about right. And uh, about yeah, right. it's fucking amazing. Speaking of everything's a modulator, yeah. in Bitwig, you can grab like audio rate from oh, yeah. anything within the channel. You can grab, um, I mean, they have LFOs, they have triggers. Like you can bring a MIDI trigger in from some other channel. Yeah. Um, just, it's like endless the amount of fucking craziness huh. you can do. Interesting. Random modulators. It's the best. It's beautiful. It's so good. See, I and it's cheap <laughs> compared to there's, Ableton. There's, there's part of it that to me feels like, all right, th- this is because I I've been thinking about Bitwig, but but like it's close enough for me. To Ableton. For me, what I did was like I and before getting into your rack, like I went hard into this uh, or to VCV rack, which is free, and then right. uh, but now there's a VST plugin for for that that you can basically bring it all in before it was just this like free open source thing that everybody was basically like creating a standalone all thing it was a standalone mm. thing but like mm-hmm. all of these euro rack a lot of these euro rack gear companies they it's like part of the 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 crack rock they put on the table first is like <laughs> yo just play with it for for a little bit and you know vcv rack here's, right here's the same algorithms and you know some, i feel like it sounds a little bit more digital than some of the warmth of, for sure of that stuff but but uh, it's like they 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 sprinkled it for me there, and I was watching this cat Omri Cohen, and I was like diving hard into um, all that. I was I felt like I was like learning about your rack through that stuff. Um, totally. So yeah. Bitwig though, huh? Dude, Bitwig also Bitwig. has a thing called the Grid built yeah. in. It's its own. It's basically VCV rack. Yeah, yeah. It's so own. it's yeah. it's its replacement of like Max for Live essentially. Okay. It's like a whole system that you could just build whatever you want in. Yeah. Neither Whether of us have effect. actually gotten deep into it. No, I haven't yet. even touched it yet. We've been barely. You know, so yeah. how many how many bangers. hours this is the this is always where I've run into this problem. I'm just like I've got all this muscle memory on Ableton. Right. Sure. And, oh. and I've already moved out of the DAW. So yeah. really what I want the DAW Sound to like do. Sound like a bunch of me? other pussies I know. <laughs> <laughs> really, Fine. what I want the dog to do <laughs> is kind of like be a multi-track recorder that I then kind of mix in. Um, it's probably not even Ableton's probably not even the best thing to mix in, but that's the only thing. That if I've you're comfortable made. though, like yeah. fuck it. If you know how to work your way around it, especially if, uh, like you said, you've worked your way out of the DAW. If you're if you're playing outside the DAW, then like you know what you're doing. You don't need to switch to Bitwig necessarily. Yeah. Yet. It's you like know. six months. But really, you kind of want to... It's like six do, months. The thing is, it is takes you about kinda, six months to You kind of want to do what your homies are doing because... Like, oh, for sure. That's... Right? Like, that's, I think, Dude, initially... What not for right. us. Mm. Well... <laughs> well, I guess me and Caleb are the homies doing it. Yeah. But, but like... Guys, yeah. But if, if... if Yeah. And you guys probably collaborate, what, the A most, little bit, right? yeah. So yeah. if you... It's like you kind of have to do the thing, yeah. and then one person's going to win out on the yeah, argument. Yeah, it was it pretty was easy so for both of us. We were both <laughs> like, was it really? Yeah, Let's they were try both it. so gung ho about yeah. it. They were yeah. both just ready. Well, okay, Ableton, okay. Ableton <laughs> crashes all the time, and it just fucking is slow. Yeah. Fucking isn't very. It's also CPU. we know Ableton so well. It's like, it's give me boring. something that I don't know, yeah. So yeah. I can actually Let's do something different because yeah. I, I just do the same shit over yeah. and over oh, and over again in Ableton. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I was just like, I can't. And this has changed my whole world. 
It's like yeah, it's the best. It's so, epic. So so what? Okay, sing the praises. Top five things <laughs> that you love. <laughs> oh, about Bitwig. Put them mm. on the spot. Top Let's go. Five. I like this. Top yeah, five. or top three, or top any, twenty-seven, or, or any three things that okay. that that. Why so one you thing love I Bitwig over one thing I really love is they have um, they have basically racks that are different functionality type racks. So they have mid side. They have two band and three band multi band splitters. They have um, what else? Left right. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What other kind of uh, racks side. like that? Yep. Um, mm-hmm. And now they just added these spectral uh, ones Splinders. that they split things in that way, which is it's really weird. We'll show you. It's wild. Um, yeah. And you like that they're just already pre built or whatever. Then you don't yeah. have to, because like all that. I don't really is, trust is it like, a lot of the time. Like at this point, I just have a thing that somebody right. else, mm-hmm. yeah, made like a mid side thing. I think I like yeah. Ill How often do you use it? Mm-hmm. Not well. Sometimes when I'm mixing, I'm just want to. I want to like check the check the vibe on that or something. But it's not like part of I mid side or not mid side. I don't you do mid side stuff a lot, but mid side is sick. Um, it is sick. I like a. Multi band splitter. I will use a multi band splitter all the time. I use this all the time. Phase plant. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, this if you like this, oh, yeah, your phase plant. You'll guy. Love I, I like Bitwig. Fa- yeah. Yeah. Bitwig is when very similar. Dog, I do, this, I, this is a go to for nice, nice. Phase plants. A go-to. Shout out. Makes kilohertz sense, sponsor yeah. us. Um, kilohertz. That's right. I, my favorite delay still is the kilohertz delay because it's so mm. quick and easy. And I just like, I love how small it is. And I love that I'm just like, boom, and I just plunk it in there and, and it just does what I want it to do. And I also use the, uh, from um, this cat, the uh, the transient shaper, all the time. Oh my oh, god, yeah. I use that one yeah. so much. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's so good. So transient nice. Transient shaper in Kill Hearts is really good. Yeah, yeah. so Which good. One of the best. Yeah. Um, what's your what's your plan here, um, Kal- Kalib? Well, Kalib. One of my, I just need to pull s- s- something. Up. A sound up. Yeah. Um. First off, so down here is phase phase plant, and okay. you have this little button here at the bottom that opens up the mo- the modulators. Uh-huh. This is this is one of my this is one things. of the top fives for yes. sure. So well, not just the modulators, but okay. So if I grab, let's just actually grab a random. So here I have a, a little random. I can click on. I can change his speed, his fucking oh, strength and yeah. pinch, and then a bunch of other stuff, and I can just automatically put them on whatever. And then, but I can sit here, and I can control. Yeah. Oops, I can control drag him, and it's gonna oh, be shit. a new yeah, random so that, okay. every time. And, and it's you just, could take that and bring it over to the next plugin you're using. Yeah, you, yeah. Like, or if you I had add, everything in a rack, you could apply the same one to like five different plugins at the same I'll time. Just, Grab a tantrum here, a distortion plugin, and I'll just drag it over here. So that feels a lot more Euro rackish yeah. than than like way uh, more me, modular. Me taking the what the Max for Live LFO and kind of like mapping it to whatever plugin that I'm I'm using and and watching it kind of wiggle a little. Like the UI on that is such shit compared to what you're mm. showing me right here. Mm-hmm. And as somebody that designs UI, I'm that's one of those things. That I'm like, <laughs> sure, I'm drawn into the UI of plugins. Like sometimes I just like to sit around and be like, how would I recreate? You know, outputs portal or nice. Like, okay, you know. yeah, yeah, that's fun. Well, when we decide to make some plugins one day, we'll Dude, definitely I, be I would, talking I would, to I would, you. I'd love to, man. You just got to find someone to code that shit. Exactly. I don't know right. how. Yeah. I, I I know where to direct for like how you would look for like right. the type of programmer where that go. you would look for and oh. what they program in, but um, I have no idea how to do it. Mm-hmm. Same. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. First, it's like, it's a, a, a lot of those shit. cats are using it's C plus plus uh, C plus plus and I if I say it right C plus plus and then it's like a juice J U C E okay libraries mm. or whatever that they, a lot of them are are programming. Hmm. If you ever look for any of these companies, go to the like who they're looking for. They're always looking for those developers, and usually there's some version of a C plus plus background mm-hmm. for that. Okay. With but interesting. Um, what else you got, Caleb? You got another idea? Uh, I did, and I forgot uh, what it was. Um, One of the fun ones, you guys showed me, I don't remember I what could, it was, could, but there was something that did like a, a bounce down thing. 
Oh, oh, oh there just is a simple bombs. concept. There, there is modulators. a bunch of fucking... Yeah, I've never seen anything like that. That um, ever since I saw that, that one day I was like, oh. Just go through those modulators for a second and show them what they are, because there's so this, many this, random. This, this this might be the one. Oh, that's fun. Like adds a bunch of fucking. So Ableton's, Ableton Ableton's has something got like a little that. bouncy ball thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, does it really? Uh, yeah. It's got a little bouncy ball thing, but the yeah. UI for this is still cooler. Mm. <laughs> is that part of the? Uh, is that part of? Bitwig. That is yeah, like yeah. it's yeah. it's called a um it's a note, uh, what is it note effect or something like that. But it's yeah no a, is it a VST effects. or is no. that a yeah part it's of within the effect. software. Yeah, is that part of the spectral thing? No, uh, no. You you're, you're harmonize. Uh, do you know uh, the name of the bouncy ball one? MIDI CC. Super nice. Oh. What? Yeah. What? Do you know the name of the bouncy ball thing off the top of the dome in Ableton? It might be called bounce. I, I haven't seen that one. I would love to check that out. You'll, You'll be able velocity. to find it very easily. Right, probably. Mm-hmm. Instead yeah. of what, so MIDI CC there instead of like using an external instrument. And uh-huh. It's just there's every random little tool and it's, it does to have like all the rig necessary, things together. It has all the necessary tools to rig in modular like with its own shit. It's like right. built to like really easily plug and play with a, with out, outboard modular gear. With like Interesting. fucking controlled f- f- voltage and shit. What w- does... Wait, so does it, can you get it to send, so Ableton's got CV tools, and so I was using CV tools to send DC signal, or it converts it somehow to send DC signal to like my ES9, or my electric mm-hmm. uh, expert sleeper's ES9, which essentially converts that stuff, the clock into control voltage, and back through. I'm sure that this has some kind of CV, oh, yeah. Yeah, CV definitely. Yeah, control oh, yeah. type thing. Yeah, yeah. It's mm-hmm. got all, all those kind of little bits. All right, does. I will try it. At least check it out. Yeah, yeah. I'll check it out. Go. But but I'm putting it on the table. Oh, y'all have to try. Then let's do an easier oh. one. An easier. Okay. Y'all have to y'all have to tip your toe into the water then with like VCV rack. Okay. To see to see if if you would like a your mm. rack. Have you have you have you? Yeah, I've, I've fucked with it a little, little bit. Yeah. yeah. So John has one. John has a bunch of. Modular gear, dude. Yeah. If my if my buddy's um, uh, AC upstairs is just getting into uh, like mod racks and euro racks and shit, yeah. about uh, like eight months or so now, and he is full blown obsessed and diving into it, it's and getting fun, me. Man. I wish he was here on the pod right I now. I don't YouTube know. If, would just be like, ah. I don't know if it actually increases productivity for sure releasing tracks. Mm. But it's <laughs> just a lot of fun for making shit, dude. Right? right. Yeah. It's like sometimes that's I just, all that matters. Yeah. yeah. It's like yeah. I just want to sit there and just like, like, like make ambi- weird ambient shit, just and have all of this stuff kind of never repeat in the background, mm-hmm. right? And not have mm-hmm. to do it with a mouse, you know. Mm-hmm. I think that that's the but that's the sell. So yeah, I will. I'll take the Bitwig challenge. Well, how how how, okay. how, how, okay. how how much how costly is it to get in? Four uh, hundred. Well, I mean, if the three of us pitch yeah, into one, and the, oh, you're talking about we Bitwig? spent three hundred dollars on Bitwig. Yeah, we got. You it. can get it for free. Black, and oh, that's not. Bad. You just Friday. can't save. That's not bad. Yeah, you you, you can download it or the the and demo. You just can't save or print. Yeah, for three hundred bucks. No, for free. The demo. Oh, I, would, I would. I would can't do that. I would just get sure. Whatever. But yeah, I can't deal with all that shit. On Cyber Monday, it'll probably be three three hundred bucks. Okay. Then I'm gonna put a challenge. Then then VCV rack is free, and I want to. We will have maybe we'll like. Here's what I created in Bitwig. Here's what I created in VCV rack. Do I have to create a I whole thing that. in VCV I think, rack? I just think make this some is noises. Great. Yes. Whatever. All three of us. We, yeah, we well, do our own thing. I would. We just I would. I would it. toss you like Omri Cohen on on the YouTube channel. Okay. And be like, here's the cat. He's like the patron saint. Okay. You know, mm. uh, and just be like, all his shit's free. He's got other th- stuff you can go kind of go into, but like he's the dude that explains He'll it. Give I you feel the, like info. the best. Um, and he's got this. I've like, definitely fucked with it before. I might have it on my computer already. Be like, make me some think. random shit. Okay. With VCV. And All right. We'll see what we come up with. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. I'm down. I'm down to fuck with VCV rack. I all I do for making noises is fuck around and make weird little mud pie things. So. Yeah. Right. That, it's the same shit. That's that's you know that's, that's the, the best way. Yeah, you don't know what you're gonna get. But like, so then the thing is, is like I don't I don't know what the version of like the make noise morphogene is in software anymore. Like I don't know how to 
do what that thing does in seconds. And it's like this, right. this like granular synthesizer yeah. thing that I can chop up samples. And see, then the thing is, is like what that puts out, then I chop that shit up in like the dig attack or something, and then I've got a thing, and then ultimately everything lands, still lands back in the DAW, but the process of getting there to the... It's probably slower. I'm, I'm sure it's but slower. But of course it is. Know? But it's just... <laughs> <laughs> of course it's slower. It's a lot slower for sure. But I, I it's like yeah. happy accidents of yeah, who like... Who cares um, though? Yeah, you get better noises that way too. Like the other day I was... So I recently kind of like... Like the my very first uh, piece of outboard gear ever was the Mother 32 and I sold mm-hmm. it. And then, and then I was like, shit, well, that sucked. You know, that was not a great, and I didn't, it's cause I didn't know what I was doing. And then I kind of like went all the way back. And now I just recently picked up a, like a, a sub harmonicon. And I'm like, I'm like, I would never ever intentionally make the harmonies and the polyrhythms that are coming out of the subharmonicon in a way that, like, I don't think I would have been able to to do at first. But now I'm just, I'm just like, yeah. I'm like that thing that it did. I don't want to do with a mouse, you know? Right. Mm. Sure. And I, I don't think I could do with a mouse because it just it's like a, this accidental. It's like all happy sure. accidents for me, you know? Mm-hmm. For sure. So that's such a beautiful thing. The happy accidents in music. Oh my god, I live for that shit. Same. Oh my God! Yeah. That's, that's why we make mud pies, dude. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> are you Are you familiar with the term mud pie? Yeah. Let's go. You yeah. already know. Well, it's just or like preset shredding. It's like yeah. sure. preset making. shredding. I like that. Well, so so like that's the first a way to make a mud pie. Yeah. The the first person that I heard mention that was so like I went through the producer dojo thing with mm-hmm. uh, Ill cool. Gates and cool. And I kind of went through that, and um, I've been kind of on that Discord for a hot second, and and that was kind of what brought me into the thing. I was like, what is this thing about a mud pie? Mm-hmm. I'm sure I saw, like, an ad or something. I was like, make a mud Some pie. Some random but, shit, know, yeah. And, and then I, it I, took me a while to figure that out, too. And then yes, just kind of yes. going through making all this noise and chopping up all the stuff, and I was just like, right, of course. It makes so much sense. Yeah, and, like, yeah. Th- there's your, you make your own samples. Yeah. That's your sample. You don't need to right. buy there, the sample. There's your palette uh-uh. for yeah. the drink. Right. But that's what is beautiful about, uh, like, the modular method is, like, you're just dicking around, having fun with your synth and recording this 30-hour-minute session, just having fun. And, dude, that hour-long session, so much material is in there that is usable. Sure, here and there, there's a bunch of garbage where you're like, oh, that got a little too And you get better each time. Noisy. Yeah. Yeah. Your first couple mud pies, you don't know what you're doing. I I remember... I wasn't very good at them, but I kind of recognized that. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I got to just keep trying because eventually I'm going to figure out like where I can't yeah. put a bunch of delays or where I have to kind of EQ before a thing to make sure it stays tame yeah. Yeah. as I'm yeah. kind of like fucking with it the oh, whole way along. Fully. And Flair. now it's like second nature. I'm just like, oh, I need to EQ this because it's getting out of control. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I yeah, need to do right. this before this because it's going to be better. You know, and just, I just, now it's like. Where, where do you guys find thing. that you make your mud pies? Like, what's your. Where, what's your go-to to make mud pies with? Oh, I, have a, I have a couple great different. Question. Yeah, I want to hear all of us. Really good question. This is sick. That's I'm curious question. how many. Like, what? What would you? Okay, I'm gonna. I'll throw some things out there. Okay. Yeah. Serum. Shoot. Phase plant. Hmm. Um. Well, let's see. Those would be the things. And then that make. Tyrell. Yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll just say between we'll you, you just like sent an arrow through my Vital. heart because that was one I was gonna bring and, up, and then Ty- just like Ty- a bunch of a, a shitload oh, of really? decapitator, and, like, decapitator and like decapitator and like what rift? Or yeah, or yeah, something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Eh. yeah. Here no, you we'll, don't like we'll, it. We'll go around the rift board. Is Caleb started off. Yeah. So the go to all to all time favorite of mine is just face playing with a sine wave. Yeah, and then you just throw an EQ after it, and you put a bell on that fundamental. You're playing a low F, and you just—I mean, we could do it right, right now. But you just fucking push up on that fun fundamental into a clipper or a distortion unit, and then you start just putting shit in or before and or after that distortion unit, like a bunch of random shit. Ah. You just keep fucking with that, and you'll get beautiful things. Mm. Interesting, beautiful like a bunch things. of. Multi band compressors, or yeah, whatever, yeah, you like can do that, or a bunch of fucking delays at once, and you'll get like that. And then, if you add on the f- phase plant, which is one of my all time favorite now, 
yeah. things to do. I didn't used to do it. I used to just play like one note or or a riff, and it would just repeat that riff, and it would just constantly sample all the shit I'm putting in and out of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, now I make a long LFO or envelope in phase plant that causes the sound to like uh, articulate, basically, whether huh. it's gain or a f- filter, just something to articulate the amplitude going into this the eq and the distortion unit Mm. and it's usually really uh what's the word like constructive it's like i was gonna say sexy but it's like no it's like two hits that are just like normal pluck style things and then like one big wub or something and then like some quick wubs and then like a swell and then like an open into like a a long down you could use these days curve yeah, does right. that? Ex- there, it has exactly. that like thing in uh, phase plant where you can have it go like, and then it like right. has it has like a mm. full like LFO like yeah, customizable one. long wide yeah. version yeah. of an L- LFO, yeah. so and then can you can like have like a sampler kind of style thing where it has like walls and it starts in and right. then it oh, cool. just loops until it goes out, which is pretty sick. So. What I basically do is get it like that, so it's doing a series of right. things I might use over the course of four bars. Mm-hmm. And then I have all of my randoms and all my LFOs on all the plugins. After I've kind of figured it out over the course of like 20 minutes what I want, <coughs> I start modulating things, and they're all set in four bars. So mm-hmm. it plays the whole thing oh. in one random spot, and then it switches and then it plays that whole thing oh, again cool. in one random spot. So I just get a bunch of fucking. That's a good so way you've to like go. automated Pre-cut. the process of having to. Yeah, you still have to kind of yeah. have the yeah. first twenty minutes of trying to see what's going to happen. But yeah. then once you find a good combo of things, and you're like, "Ooh, I like all the textures yeah. happening." Now I can just fuck with all the knobs, and I'll just set them to random to just go and just do it while I'm away, or while I'm fucking yeah. whatever. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah, you just stretch it out and right click and hit bounce. Yeah, it's the fucking shit. <laughs> yeah. So then, yeah. What? So what's your What's your process to mud? How do you get muddy, bro? How do I get muddy? Yeah. Um, Mud. So I want to say two things about it. Maybe potentially three. I used to do... I know. Fucking dropping some bombs, baby. Dropping some pumpkins. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, I used to try... I was in this phase where I thought everything that created a good sound would be inside of my synth. So I use serum mainly, yeah. dipping my toes into phase plan, but like serum 99% of the time, you know? Sure. Um, and I would do everything in there. I would make my mud pies in there, and I would just record and like tweak shit, add LFOs randomly. And I remember John one day, uh, Restraint, shout out shout Restraint, out. he was sure. like, you should try and just do it outside of the DAW, just for the sake or of it, just to o- like outside play. Outside of the plugin? I mean, uh, outside of the plugin, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, um, dude, Post. that was an absolute game changer because right. that's when I realized, like, you can take a sine wave and do basically Magical anything. Magical things and to it. Magic yeah. happens, yeah. Right. Um, so, yeah, now my process these days is just get something, like, really simple in Serum going. Get, like, a fun wavetable. I'm, I'm really, like, against basic wavetables. Not, like, against, but I think the fun, fun sounds come out of not using the stock. You know, the the four starting with like drawing your you can draw them. Yeah. Throw in throw in like a random like fully sample into it. Just create weird wave tables. Uh, Serum has a function where you can resample whatever you're making in Serum into just a wave table. Yeah. And that's been a lot of fun because then you can add uh, like formants and phaser effects just pre-built into the sound and then go off that. But um, yeah, trying to just do as much uh, post processing. And something I've been having a lot of fun with lately is delays and pitching. Mm. Mm. Just create absolute, just like chaos and like weird fast pitching. pitching. So typically, a good way that like, or a way I will start is if you take a delay, put it on millisecond mode, so you have like freeform time through the delay, and add an LFO to that. Mm-hmm. Um, if you put it on 100% wet. It takes the sound and, you know, it duplicates mm. it as a delay does. Yeah. Right. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, it creates yeah. not only yeah, like you do the no illusion. feedback and you don't have to worry about the echoing. The happening. Ring. Yeah, yeah. 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 Sometimes yeah. you can play with feedback, but yeah, yeah. start it with no feedback for sure. Yeah. Keep right. it, keep it cleaner because yeah. it shit gets messy in a mud pie. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that effect, not only does it create the illusion of pitching, 
just because mm-hmm. the sample is happening fast. But then it also, I don't know what exactly why it is doing that, but it's literally just like pitching and warping shit in the weirdest way. And then what you can do is you take that and you delay it again and take those weird little like kind of sounds and duplicate them and throw them out into space and modulate that with like a pitch or mm-hmm. a filter and then repeat the process, delay it again, throw it into space again and keep pitching and repeating huh. that. Resample, filtering. resample, resample. Yeah, yeah. Or even in one chain, yeah. Oh, okay. And it gets it gets super, super messy, super fast, but that's how I get all of my like drippy, <gasps> wet, organic, you like gave it away. weird. I know the secret is out. Oh wow. man. Wow. Um, Thank you, studio <laughs> audience. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> But no, really, yeah. Yeah, to make I a mud like pie, that. you just, it's, I've learned it's just about processing and playing with all of your chain using Caleb's method of yeah, shoving I mean, a fundamental in a distortion unit. Yeah. It's insane shit. That's one of my favorite ways. One Wh- of what them. you learn after making a bunch of mud pies is you learn what results you like and you figure mm-hmm. out how you got there. So then you're like, okay, I like that universe. Yeah. Like, sure, the, the mud pie creation universe is endless, te- mm-hmm. technically. Right. But, a lot of times you'll end up in a weird pocket and you're like, oh, I need to retrace my steps back. And then you can kind of build a highway into that area and start like mining sounds in that kind of area, which I like to do because then you kind of exhaust yourself at a certain point. You're like, okay, this is, I've heard all these things before. What can I do now to like spice this up or do something different? Yeah. And it kind of allows you to like map things mentally of where sounds are going to go, which really helps you with when anybody hears a sound which this happened to me recently. I had I had a buddy hit me up, and he's like, can you make this lead that's on this track? And I was like, oh, yeah, I know exactly what that is. <laughs> it, it, it took me like a minute and a half to, to make it. It was a, yeah. s- a simple sound. But I remember when I first started pr- it would have been impossible. I was like, that's mm-hmm. wild that people can do that. Like, that's how would you be able to do that? That's black magic right there. Yeah. And now right. just, just because I've stayed dedicated to like actually wanting to learn and like yeah. create a mental map of like sounds and figure out like what's happening basically it's allowed me to fucking yeah kind of fucking little third or third eye yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. you could literally just look at the fucking waveform yeah that and too. be like oh it's a saw wave there's a yeah. little bit of like a square being pushed into it somehow and then right. it's pitching in this yeah. like it's right. pretty easy to figure out what's going on in a sound right. just by looking at the waveform at this point which right. is sure. fucking insane yeah sure it is wild mm-hmm. that's what happens when you stare at audio a I will uh, your buddy, I will do like ba- a water. similar kind of thing muddy buddy I like to <laughs> I like to figure out whether I want like a longer or a more plucky sound sure. uh, kind of effect out of whatever I'm doing oh um, or, or maybe I want it to be very in that way so like a release is getting a random amount mm-hmm. or something like that uh, arpeggio with randoms on like time, uh, how many octaves it's doing, the algorithm that it goes with. Um, and then uh, I will do some sort of very, very light distorting um, slash EQing, Maybe pull out a little bit of like that low end or something, depending on what the noise is. Um, and then uh, and then do like a delay thing, like what you're talking about, uh, and then do another set of like EQ distortion or clip mm-hmm. or whatever l- limit. Like do like layers of uh, affect it, and then make sure it doesn't go crazy, and then affect it, and then make sure it doesn't go mm-hmm. crazy, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then and make it as random as possible in that right. situation. But it's I like them. Totally. I like my mud pies really simple, and I like a. Yeah. If right. I'm doing that kind of thing, I like to make movement. like a interesting chord, and then run it through an arpeggio that way, so that I c- can like basically fake uh, get myself a, a melody. Uh, a melody, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. I, that's how I get all my melodies yeah, these days. I'll just like, yeah. yeah, I'll make it do different things, and then I'll loop a section, and then scroll through and find yeah. a spot where it like. Does a really fun thing, and you're like, ah, there's the melody right there. Right. Yeah. Or sometimes you just sift through and find the notes that you want and use those notes. Right. Right. How do you most? Let me let me swing back around. Sorry, I'm asking the questions. Yeah, he took over the podcast. I don't know if the producer. Am I like? Am I off script? I'm probably off script. No, there's no script. But you're killing it. But 
Do you? Dude, how do you utilize? Do you see this shit? You like you follow instructions. <laughs> oh shit! Do not ask yeah. questions. We'll be right back God for a commercial damn. break. Um, we could. How do you, how do you uh, how do you guys mostly like to u- utilize them? So like you make a utilize bunch of what? Shit. Oh, the mud pie. Yeah. So like, mm. do you kind of have okay. different sessions? So like, how do you recently like, make bases or in the last totally, totally in the last two years, my mud pies have spe- actually let me get dollar on. store donk over here. We're in. Uh, Green Ridgeville, Denver. Uh, yeah, Green Colorado. Ridgeville, Denver. Green Ridgeville. Yeah. Out here. Uh, uh, yeah, it, Colorado, though. Uh, what's up? By Denver. S- marijuana. Super Dollar Store Dunk. Um, That's how I'm going to say your name. <laughs> um, dollar Store Dunk. So, recently, as of the last like two years, my mud pies, I consider them pallets for the track. So I can usually make my Ooh. drums most... Because I'm making house right now, I'm focusing on that. I can make a house beat with drums without any kind of flavor, really, other than just like I want it garagey or I want it techy. Like I can just, I don't, I don't have to worry about what the vibe is. I can just make drums. Yeah. So I make a good enough drum beat and like mix it till I think it sounds tight and I'm, I can just listen to it tight, on, on a loop and it's I'm like, tight, dude. Oh, that's it. It's then, so tight. Then it's basically time for mud mud pie. I, I basically will yeah. either like Same. have a sample, like I'll check splice on, sometimes. I'll just type in music and then go to random, mm. and I'll just sit mm-hmm. there and keep scrolling until I like hit something that like sparks my interest, whether I download it or not. It just it's like a random vibe gen gener generator. Yeah. Oh, okay. Random Dude, we need those vibe generators. Random too. vibe generator. <laughs> Yeah. Random vibe. That's a good house track. That, um, we've already made that up. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's in the phone. <laughs> um, so, wh- whatever it is, however I make my make the mud pie, I'm making it with the idea that it's going to be now the palette for this track. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so I make it, and then I could chop it up or what have you. Like sometimes I'll make a, an effect chain, and I'll have a face plant patch play through it in mud pie, uh-huh. and then I'll put all those effects on an audio chain and just throw in snares and kicks and percussion and oh, random yeah. shit and then just let it give me all my other little transient bits for, for the track. Oh. And they're all kind of got the same coating of flavor on them. Yes. And then I just chop all that yes. up and that's my fundamental to start with. Yeah. I start getting a vibe together and then I just add whatever I need and I don't worry too much. But I usually I try and nice. start with like some kind of cohesive palette because it just... Bond the right, track right. Mm-hmm. so so well. Oh, it's yeah. crazy. Something I've kind of learned is um, I used to go into making a mud pie with the mentality of I want to get sounds that can be my lead bass sound from it. But the beauty of what like a mud pie is is it's just chaos and magic and probability yeah. and chance. Yeah. So it's like I was going magic. into it. It's fucking magic. It's magic. I would it's I would magic. only try and look for the sounds no. that would be like more bass oriented or something I could use for something like that. Because right. I make yeah. like drop music. It's like yeah. right. halftime. It's like dubstepy, you know, that kind of shit. But yeah, that's the beauty of it is like you get these weird little sounds that might just be like a high end little thing for a sec. Or sometimes they're percussive. Mm-hmm. And like really a mud pie, you can get everything out of it. Yeah. You can get crazy effects, you can get background noises, you can get bass sounds, you can get you can get so much from it. So I'd say, yeah, go and do it just with an open mind. Don't be like, I don't want to use it for specifically this thing. But back yeah. to your question is, like, how do you use it? That's a, that's a whole... Well, how, yeah, how do you specifically, like, what's your vibe? Because, I mean, everybody has their own, like, some people are just like, I make mud pies for, like, bases all day. It's mm-hmm. Like, Mm-hmm. Looking for my drop bases to squelch a certain way or something like that. So right. Mm-hmm. Here I'm gonna move this yeah. mic a little oh, bit. Oh, sorry. That's all right. right. So like, how? What? Where do you find your sweet spot is with making your mud pies? Yeah, that's a great Muddy. question. I still, I still, <laughs> I'm learning. You know, I haven't really, I haven't mastered the mud pie usage yet, or making it Which yet. Is fair. It's it's a weird thing because it's so chaotic. You know. One. Yeah. It's not yeah. every time I use yeah. it. I've learned instead of, uh, or at least like for my process, instead of trying to just make a 20-minute mud pie and chop out everything in there for the drop, I'll, I'll save all of the mud pies I make and just try and use those for little bits in the song, for mm-hmm. like little fill sections and stuff like that. 
Right. Um, because with fill sections, you can get away with so, so much. Oh, yeah. And a lot of the times, uh, like, mud pies aren't necessarily, like, rhythmically on time, you yeah. know? But if you, like, let's say your drop sound is like, bum, 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 or, like, whatever, you have, like, a normal, like, rhythmic right. lead thing. Right, it's pretty... On the turnaround, predictive. yeah, it's predictive. On the turnaround, you can basically do whatever the fuck you want, right? And then that's where mud pies shine, right? Right. Because you get this crazy ass fucking noise that's like warping, yeah. Right. right. But right. it makes sense rhythmically for that like one or two bars that you use it, right? Uh -huh. I think I think that's the sauce, at least for me. Definitely, cool. I think yeah. you could like aim a mud pie to be one or the other. Like you can like right. you totally target could. to be like this is gonna be a main drop mm -hmm. sound. Mud pie, and then you can be like, "This is gonna be a random ass fucking mud pie." Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm very excited for these fucking turnarounds. Mm -hmm. You know, kind mm -hmm. of shit. And that helps after you've just produced a lot and you've made yeah. a bunch of bun pies because you know, if I make a bunch of EQ points that are pointing up on an on a fucking e e equalizer and then have them slowly do this, the fucking bass sound that I play is gonna be pretty fucking turn around yeah. <laughs> no. exactly no <laughs> like it's gonna gets all rising a into me thing happening yeah, yeah. is that kind of what you were asking or are you saying like well, i'm just curious speaking, like, like yeah well i'm just curious like what what y'all's vibe is with like yeah okay when you, you know yeah when you when you think you know mud pie for i think a lot of people don't always know what exactly that means and oh, yeah. sure. and so it's helpful to say like well this is what it means for me and this is what i look at this is what i chase after what do you chase after on a mud pie yeah yeah i don't do know that? how often i i mean i have i i do them when i'm just kind of like looking for extra stuff but I, it's not mm. like a big part it's like okay. i've got a vibe of a thing that's happening but it's never like a place where i start with sure. anything like um like i start Usually, like my my flow is, I'm looking for chords pretty quickly, and mm. like um, chords or groove or something like that. And then, like once I kind of have that, then I'm looking to see if like it typically makes me want to sing something. And if it does make me want to sing mm. something, then it's like it's typically like a it's like hit the hit the spot in me where. But I don't. I also don't know if I make the same type of like festival banger type of music. Like mm -hmm. I'm like a like we a, do make that kind of music. I'm like guys. a singer. Don't, don't you yeah. worry about it. <laughs> I like a I'm like a singer songwriter meets rapper meets yes. like you know. You're. Uh, I don't you've know. Got if, feelings. Yeah. It's I've, okay. I've got I've got feelings. I'm like I'm like one part singer songwriter, <laughs> one part like I dude, have my side rapper, of that too. one part um, dude that's chasing big drops and stuff. But I. I, I, it's it's more like what is the emotional content of this for me, mm -hmm. and then um, usually I'm looking for and, and like what is my my initial spark with like like is it a sam I'm, I'm pretty heavily sample based as a starting point, um, but I mm -hmm. like to kind of create my own samples or I'll find something on Splice and then I'll kind of like jam on there. Right, right. But I saw this thing that like um, I think it was for Ted a long time ago. It was like one of those timed like. You know, oh, okay, ten, the ten minute, ten minute or less yeah. thing, and oh, I saw yeah. him kind of scrubbing through, um, and I think it's like well, he was just like scrubbing. He was like played something, then started scrubbing through it, and just taking like little loop markers and kind of scrubbing back yeah. and forth to find a thing. And I saw right that, there. and I was like, I think that's my whole world, right? <laughs> and then because then it then that like kind of turned into more of like. What can you do with like granular synthesis and then like modulating through right, stuff, right? And then chopping up all that stuff, yeah. And then if the weird, oh, look, and then, you are mud pieing, yeah. You're mud, I'm you're mud, mud pie. I am mud pieing, but it's like yeah. I'm mud, I'm mud pieing on like this like microcosm little slice but that's, through stuff, yeah. you know. To me, a healthy mud pie, yeah. But you, I'm not doing it to like make doing, I mean, I do it, to, I do make bases sometimes that way, but well, I never think to start I don't, like with, yeah. That's just like we're talking about food. Yeah. And then you're talking about French, and we're talking about Indian. It That's doesn't matter. True. Still food. It's the same thing. Mm. But <laughs> with with a mud pie, I'm talking about clay pies. I'm making <laughs> clay pies here. <laughs> so you're so you're making dessert, whatever. It's still, it's right. still, I can still consume it. Yeah, yeah. But a healthy mud pie, in my mind, 
gets resampled and resampled and resampled yeah. until you got that chunk that you want and then you, you use it. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. like, for example, you have it and you're like, oh, this is neat. Let me bring this now into a sampler, play it as a pad, yeah. and then I'm going to flatten that pad and then I'm going to loop a little section that's tight, bring that down, and then I'm going to throw that into reverb yeah. as a, just a hit. And that's the sound I was looking for the whole time. Mm-hmm. That's a good point. Like that, that shit I love. That's like my favorite process ever. Like yeah. keep going, keep going, keep going. Everybody's everybody's gonna be like, "What yeah. is that sound?" You're like, "I have no idea." And I'm it's, yeah, never gonna be able so to. It's really... so far removed from anything I could try and replicate. Yeah, it just is what it is. Okay, and that's so the fucking best. So then the, the part two to this question then would be, what things are you more okay using samples that you found? Like, where do you find? Where do you draw the line for like oh. the heart of the heart of the track? The heart of the track needs to be this level of original and and this part like where am i more comfortable using samples i care and don't care yeah yeah i say i say anything fucking goes when you're throwing when you're making a mud pie throw whatever the fuck you want in there but i always just for me i always feel better about just making everything from scratch it's honestly really fucking annoying so you like to just like make your own bass drums and yeah yeah All of that. I I'm not as good about making the percussion. I'll sample I'll sample a lot yeah. of like percussion and like risers and shit. But I'm trying to be better about like learning to actually make that kind of stuff. Like lately, I've been making a bunch of snares, and it's Let's been go. so it's much fun. Right. So start much fun. Right there. Yeah. That's that's why I think that like the outboard gear is fun when you kind of get into that place because it's mm-hmm. like you just put. It's like I just put a trigger on you know a thing to like like. Pitch this thing. Pitch down a sine wave or something. It's just like, you know, you're messing around with envelopes, and the next thing you know, you've got like 40 different kicks that Mm -hmm. you can then manipulate, and it's like... That's beautiful. You know, Mm -hmm. or or like mess around with a bunch of noise and, you know, kind of shorten up the decay, and you've got a thousand different... Yeah, we did a little session with John like years ago of just like recording things on his modular gear, and I use those samples all the time. Yeah. It's it's on this... They're great. ...track that I was... Showing the boys, I use that 808 more than any other 808, yeah. and we made it on just it just with a sine wave being pitched, yeah. being thrown into a tube amp saturator, of yeah. some and sort, that's yeah. it. Okay, totally. And so, then I threw it through the tape machine. Yeah, perfect, beautiful. Yeah. Um, John, <laughs> we finally figured out the fucking uh, the thing, and I can't remember the name of the plugin, but um, we we've talked about uh, using mod stuff and making mud pies for the sake of percussion. And um, let's say you did this for like D-fam. 15 minutes. The, the DFAM is such a fun thing for that, too. And it's like such what a is that simple, for? Uh, the, it's just a Moog. It's a semi modular for anybody that wants to kind of get into that. But it's just like this eight step little, you know, uh, dr- it, well, it's, it's short for drummer from another mother. <laughs> and so it's just, but it's not quite like oh. a, it's not quite like, a drum machine i wouldn't use it as a drum machine i'd mostly just kind of use it to like make weird you know oh dope but i i also just built a a kind of like a a euro rack drum kit too which i don't think you need to do but i oh that's cool though i got obsessed with like the mutant drum shit yeah and um and some of that stuff but yeah is it yeah so yeah it's that thing but and then you kind of connect it to the other modular my my least things. favorite one is the mother thirty two because everybody has a subtractive synth for a, a bunch of different reasons. Yeah, it's like, I have one. It's like I don't I, I, I don't, don't use it. What I don't want when I'm playing this stuff is I don't want to to um, know where it's going. Right. Mm-hmm. It's like right. in the same mm-hmm. like in the spirit of the mud pie, right? Like you right. don't know what's going to come out of that. That's why the happy accidents well, are so fun. It's the still a mud pie. Of the mud pie. Yeah. It really is. <laughs> it's it's everything. Mud, yeah. Basically, you could, you know, everything, everything is everything. <gasps> everything is everything. <laughs> everything. It all reduces pie. down to everything, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, so you can thing, get those now for like I got mine for four hundred bucks or four four twenty five or something. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, Shut listen up, to this man, everybody. Um, yeah. So the thing Reverb. I was going to say was less about generating the percussion, um, but we've always talked about. Let's say you wanted to make a mud pie specifically for percussion. Yeah. You're just like, oh, I want to generate like 400 <laughs> snare samples today that are all fucking random bits. John found a plugin where you can uh, individually export each sample based off the transient. No. Into its are you own serious? Does it chop it for you? Chops it for you. Ho- 
So you don't have John, to go through what up, them, bro? but I know, and I don't send that to me. I don't oh, remember shit. what it is. That's that's the main thing that I'm always looking for because I I yeah I don't want to go through there and place all. No the, one does. Yeah. yeah. You know, I that's my it. least favorite part. About he found it. He found the shopping. Thing. I just mm-hmm. fucking you just bear through I it. Just scroll mm-hmm. through. I just go and I smoke a bowl. I, you know, I, I, I do hour. everything I need to without chopping, and then if I have to result to chopping, I just mm. I'm gonna go smoke a cigarette real quick, and then I'm gonna yeah. come back, and I'm gonna fucking get, on a podcast. Get going. I'm gonna spend a couple hours here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, one of my favorite things <laughs> yeah. is like uh, doing mud pies with very melodic whatever samples of sorts. So, like, mm. I have a couple sample packs that I made that are, like, YouTube videos of, like, people playing the flute and shit um, that I went and made, like, these ridiculous mud pies out of, and then I chopped them up, and I have, like, just mm-hmm. shit tons of noises that are just, like, or whatever the huh. thing is. And every time I go in there, I'm like, why is it? Why don't I do this more often? These things are sick. Every yeah. single one of these noises is crazy. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like it's been so long since I've done one of those, but mm. I should Wait, just so, like. Yeah. So do you do guys do you guys create a lot of sample packs to sell and put on? Uh, like, we're going to now. Yeah. But we but do no. have a we have a, like a collective cloud storage pack that we're slowly building over time. Right. That's true. Oh, that cool. just like the homies, the good friends. Yeah. Cool. Anyone can add to kind of thing. Honestly, you're really welcome. We can talk oh, about that sweet. after. Yeah. But. Yeah, cool. We're, we're yeah. getting there. We're yeah, getting we have there. a we have a cloud. Honestly, if you want to be a, where storage. we give people access. Yeah, um, we're talking about a, a sample pack here soon. Maybe if you want to throw down, on throw some a little samples. something our way. We can well, I tell you what, it'd be a four hundred fam I, sample I, pack. I, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, I like I like that idea, man. If if. It's just the chopping. So if that I know right? comes yeah, I know. through, it'll, it'll be like <laughs> five. I'll, I'll I'll like send you guys like. T- like thirty minutes of shit, and just be like chop. Oh, that'd like, be brilliant! I'd love a bunch just of like, just shit. chop. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, you know? totally. Okay. Actually, yeah, yeah we that. need to talk about the, the, yeah. the cloud after this. Cool. I think I do remember John saying it isn't like perfectly accurate, like especially right. if we were doing base design mud pie. But yeah. he was saying for like percussive specifically stuff because it's based off transient. There's a very obvious, you know, yeah, and then it flies especially down. Like modular transient stuff. A lot of times it's like like if you're mm-hmm. not pushing it into a clipper. On the way out, it's but super the, sig- the, the, sig- the mm-hmm. signal is so hot though. You're saying that it, the signal doesn't come through. No, often, no, 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 no. I'm saying, at least in my experience, modular percussive things, the transient is very prominent. Like, it's, oh yeah, unless you're pushing it into a clipper on the way out. Oh, okay, um, gotcha. It'd be a similar like thing if you recorded a guitar right. with a microphone right. or something it's, like. The natural things have sh- fucking crazy ass transients. Right. Yeah. Right. Yes. right. Fucked Jesus up, right? Christ. That's yeah. that's <laughs> why the loudness war started. Because no. <laughs> they figured out clipping and sidechain thanks to yeah. pendulum. Like all in the same What moment. do you guys like to use for like standard clip on what's your clipper of uh, choice? Mm. M Wave Shaper. M Wave Shaper. Yeah, it's the it's favorite. the goat of it's goats goat. of clippers, at least for the big moment. Wig saturator. Oh, it's yeah? the same almost. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, it's almost. missing some t- features for sure. And it'll not clip it is completely dope. if you push it hard enough. Oh yeah, yeah. Like it'll let shit through. And I'm hmm. like, hmm. do you? I have not experienced so, that. So, so for clippers, um, uh, so I've been using standard clip, but I only, hmm. I kind of like, I kind of use clippers. Well, do you use them? Do you like to use them on the on? Individual tracks, or do you yeah, like to use yeah. them? You use them on everything. everything. Individual and then group. multiple times then, yeah. on everything. Yeah, we've even been experimenting be clipped, with. Do you use them? Okay. To clipped to death, do you but use them over? So, all right. Here's another shootout: compressors, limiters, clippers. Oh, I use them all for different things. Yeah. How do you use them? Compressor for depth, clipping for loudness, uh, and. Limiter for and f- final pushing, like I guess, t- or sealing, I guess, mm-hmm. like is a better two. word. Yeah, I use it as just like a ceiling. A like limiter is like a nice way to go. You're not I know s- that it doesn't go over zero. Yeah, and I don't necessarily. And you're not need to slamming p- into no. it. <laughs> Some, yeah. Sometimes you I'll just, use it for sound it. design. Like yeah. if I'm working on something in a mud pie or something, I'm just like. Yeah. See how it sounds <laughs> so, way through yeah. the roof. Right, Trav- right. Travis told me this thing a long time ago about like not. Uh, do you guys use Pro L2? Yeah, yeah. all as the your, time. As your limiter. Yeah. So Travis said this thing to me, uh, I Am Mountain. Uh, Shout he, out. He told me. Been on the pod. Uh, he, he said that, like, 
the true peak limiting button mm-hmm. there to turn that off. Yeah. Um, I've do been you guys turning do it t- off. You guys yeah. turn it off too? I, I have no idea. Do you see the Yours vis- is on. It's, do you it's, see oh, it's all on. Okay. I leave it on by accident a bunch, but I w- when I turn it off, I notice a significant difference where really? everything is like really pushed in a mix. Mm. Yeah. I forget mm. now why, though, to turn it off. I forget. Um, why. I, forget too. I, think yeah. it's, I don't know enough about it. I th- think maybe there's like um. some latency involved slash like it's it's squashing. You probably the, get a little sizzle transient. off of it. Does it uh, really like if you turn it off, it like allows some peaks to go through mm-hmm. versus if you leave it on, it's just like like a like a clipper. It's supposed to at yeah. that point. I yeah, remember I don't, Hook Line was getting really into this. We oh, had like a whole so debate fucking, on the pod. Yeah. Right. Early so episode of the pod, yeah. Yeah. He yeah. Oh, I wish he was here. But I, I, I do like it off. It's at least on my last like three limiters. Oh. Like right before the end. Which all three of those aren't really doing a lot. It, yeah. You could do it with one. I just like splitting the work of one into three. So like on your pre master, your master, Correct. or whatever, and then my second yeah. m- m- master, just like one yeah. after the other, oh, okay. basically, just just yeah. for. Yeah. If I'm using a Good compressor, measure. it's either to force something to be backwards or forwards, right? Depth, or I will use it to, um, like for instance, like a vocal is a really nice thing to use a compressor yeah. on because if it goes. If it peaks out, yeah. it readjusts the volume back down, and and you can like really like level Squashy. a sound out. That's like very dynamic sound. Yeah, mm-hmm. anything that kind of varies a lot, uh-huh. I'll use a, li- a compressor or a, like a couple or something 100%, to try yeah. and like just mm. stay down, so I don't have to like auto volume automate every single little moment. Mm-hmm. Right, and you can do that super easy, yeah, just really it. fast. You just need like fast attack, fast. Release C two on the vocal. You can setting. re-put your depth in with another compressor later by Correct. adding more attack. Correct. Um, but yeah, to get it just to well, yeah. The the Pro C fucking vocal it's setting the sauce is it is the it's best. Amazing. It's huh. you, the best. You got uh, yeah. I got Pro C two. Pro C. I just Pro C. I only have those three. Just. Uh, Q3, those L2, are the three L2. nice. That's all you need. Yeah, yeah. the other ones yeah. are fun, but dude, you, those are the bangers. Yeah. I haven't, I haven't like found my sweet spot though with the compressor yet on it. Um, same. Mm, I just because I kind of still just I'm so used to the Ableton compressor doing what I needed to do and like some multiband stuff. Mm. So I, I'm, I'm still, but I know uh, it's like I got it. So I know I want to find what the thing is. Super so easy. The, vo- the vocal sauce. Super now. easy. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, the vocal you'll. It's gonna blow your mind how good it works. Um, it just, it's just reactive as fuck. Yeah, the and ratio like, goes away. And it's, it's just how it's much you transparent. Dig. Do you, you, know? find, do you um, find yourself needing the some of the like what's the CL CLA two A or CLA? any of those do waves you find ones like, or anything? No. Does it, does it reduce your desire to put any of the waves? I don't have uh, any of the LA waves two, ones. LA two A either. Uh, Again, Travis. I just saturate that shit. I just saturate my vocal. Once yeah. I got that's what we're talking about, yeah. right? Yeah. La two A is giving yeah, a LA2A. saturation. And oh, for like color. Oh, is shit? that a compressor? No, it, it's it's the it's I think it's it is a compressor. It's a compressor, yeah. Yeah, but it has color. It's it definitely it has color. Yeah. But it was like the main. It was like one of the main compressors mm. that people were using for so long. Well, and, C, yeah. But I don't. All really, of C two modes are emulations of right of, of really those. big. Uh, uh, com- Pressors. There's really nice. There's a bunch, but of I don't remember what they are because they c- call them just like clean, punchy, yeah. yeah, vocal mastering. There's like yeah, the mastering one is it's nice if you soft. just want a clean just compressor like that is very transparent and it just does the exact job you want. If you want something that's more reactive, yeah, um, like you might want for like drums or something like that, you use like an optical. Yeah, the optical is tight. Really, I mean, I basically use the mastering, the optical, and then the vocal. Same. Um, for any the vocal, I only use for stuff that's very like random yeah. uh, velocity. Mm-hmm. Um, but huh? Yeah, I'm, cool. You just another you just crank the look down to zero. The the look ahead. Right. Look, at, look it down. The look the look, look it down. down. I mean, he's looking down. Crank look the down look ahead to zero. To zero. If you want, if you're using the compressor for depth, you use long attack for something close, short yeah. attack for something far away. Yeah, and kind of and kind of go the same direction with the release in that situation as well. Although you try and think of it as things farther away are more compressed, right? Yeah, than things close to you because yes. the air compresses them. 
Mm-hmm. So you get more transient for somebody, and, oh, something I, that's close than you do from something far away. I do use the bus mode uh, oh, yeah. on all my groups. All my oh, groups okay. are in bus mode. Are you guys answering I've his been question? Using that's optical. what we're talking about? No. Oh, uh, oh I, my bad. Oh, totally we're talking yeah, about. So we're, I'm just I'm rapid filter. fire as things. I know up. Yeah. you killed yeah, it. So. <laughs> cool. Um, another thing I was going to say though about comp- compressors is I have learned that my sub, like if it's just a straight sine uh, sine wave or close to that, mm-hmm. like an 808, I compress the fucking living shit out of that shit. <laughs> oh. Cool. Because my whole methodology... No, it's a square way. Well, I, I don't let it distort. You go till it's going to distort, and then you back right. it off. Yeah. But my theory with it is I want my sub as binary as possible. I don't okay. want... Mm. I'll have a sub drop if I want sub that's doing something dynamic. I don't want my sub Massively dynamic. Massively important. I want it just on or off. Dude. Yeah. This is... I, okay, so and the, I, I got another... That way, when, ev- when everything's pushed go together at the end... Wait, are we going to keep going for a sec? Because Should I get another beer? Anyone need a beer? Yes, please. Please, beer me. Yeah, I'll take another one. beer. I got you. Um, so, so, okay, here's, here's a good... Here's a, pee. This came up the other day. Okay. I'm, I have to do that in a second, too. But here's... here's <laughs> this came up the other day, um, and uh, it was basically around um, 808s. Okay. So, so okay. Go on. Obviously, the answer is mixed to taste, right? Sure. Right, uh, but uh, well, so so there's like there's mixed to taste. There's kind of r- like rules of thumbs. You, you know, uh, so mm-hmm, that program mm-hmm. that I went through with uh, Ill Gates and them. So it was just like a good rule of thumb is kind of like a negative six kick and snare, and like a negative twelve. Right. Uh, right. Sub. That's usually what I've heard too. Right. Yeah. That's as not a, what as, I do. As a starting point. That's not what I, yeah, yeah. As yeah. a template starting point. Right. And, you know, kind of, like, mix up into the thing. Right. But this, I've always kind of had this moment where with 808s, like, making hip-hop mm-hmm. or, um, like, this kind of crossbreed of, like, one part hip-hop, one part Just anything dance that's music. Bass, bass anything heavy. that's going to build up into some kind of uh, vibe change where, like, the kick is obviously kind of doing its own thing and, and the sub is there. Um, but it's not, like, the main part of it. But... When you kind of build up into some sort of a drop, and like maybe the drop, then you want to be 808 drums where there's a melodic element happening in in the 808s, right? Right, right. What do you like to do with your kick drum the moment that you bring in 808s? Do you drop out the 808? So when when I, is that 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 crossover uh, well, between 808 and and sub two, for two you things. with levels? What do you like to do? Two things. One. Like I say oh, to, you. whatever, what, what pick yours? Like I say to a bunch nice. of guys, uh, your first line of defense is arrangement. Yeah. So, if you can have the 808 not land with the kick and make a good bass right. line, do that first. Classic house bit. Right. C- classic everything. Everything. Bit. Just like bass music, especially you do it all the time. Yeah, uh-huh. no, no, no. But, eight, but 808's kind of... Uh-huh. But regardless of I that... I think yeah. that was the one thing I was going to say. Side chain, it is no? different. You sidechain. Uh, well, now your 808 is out of the way of your kick. I see what you're saying. Right, right. Okay. So your first line okay. of defense, your first line, not saying you have to do it, it's just think of it first, is keep the bass from hitting with the kick. Then you don't have to worry about sidechain or levels. They can just coexist and they're fine. Right. But if they are going to hit, hit together, have exquisite side chain yeah. which i have shaper box 2 that allows me to multi-band my ducking so i can duck just the fundamental of the entire whatever from just the kick so all, all only that bottom end has has to get out out of the way of the kick nothing from 200 up so you still get all the girth yeah. of the 808 so i'm not really concerned when it comes to phrasing and like, where does my kick and my 808 land when I'm making like a hip hop style yeah. of thing? Because to me, so much of the time, the the 808 hits on the kick. Correct. I like yeah. that and not. I think it's better to have a little bit of both. Mm-hmm. Like have it hit on the one, obviously, so you get that good impact. But then I like the kind of pre one, the four e and uh, 
yeah. into the one with like a sub going up an octave, like boom, 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 and yeah. then mm-hmm. you know it hits again. Mm-hmm. So you get those little fun bits, mm-hmm. and then having the polyrhythms of have having like the eight oh eight then hit kind of pre the kick, uh, in in a nice loose manner. But yeah. do you treat the eight oh eight level? So like okay. we were just talking on, about no. like the the negative kind of like as a, a rule of thumb of like if your kick is and kick and snare at like negative six negative or kick and snare negative six and your sub at like negative twelve mm-hmm. when the eight oh eights happen do you treat that more as a kick drum or do you treat that more as a sub it's and, sub. The, and the leveling for that and granted obviously two tastes but as just like a template. For people, where do you like to treat that as for your leveling of those things? Do you re, do you just replace the kick drum with an 808 then at that point? No. Um, I don't. You keep them. I, I treat the 808 as a sub, as depending a sub. on how distorted I want it to be. If I want it really distorted, then I'm going to treat it as a bass sound with a sub attached, and yeah. I'm going to multi band what I need to to get it to where I need to. But my rule of thumb is I always write into a limiter. So, so the kick and snare are no longer at negative six. They're just at null. So I, I don't mix with the thought of sending it off or write with the thought of sending it off to someone to mix with headroom. I'm the one who has to deal with the headroom, so I'm just going to start with no head, head, head Oh, headroom. so you you just like... I just start with the kick slamming zero immediately. on your mm. uh, In your bus, or are you doing that at the master? At at, at the m- master. Now, I yeah. will go back, and as I mix the drums, I squash them, and then I readjust or whatever, oh, but yeah. everything's already at null. Oh, so it's okay. already there. So, mm-hmm. therefore, my sub, I like shooting for negative five oh, wow. when I'm just soloing the drums and the sub together, because that's basically where negative six Luffs. and negative t- twelve is. Yeah, yeah. Um, but 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 it is no 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 not not oh less. negative five decibels right decibels yeah. for the five. sub right right minus five that, under that's the about kick where I'm at too yeah because once everything else is squashed in it usually pushes it up more oh, yeah. although mm-hmm. I've analyzed a couple German bass tracks as of late that has me second guessing dude right uh, mm-hmm. some right? some things yeah. not completely second guessing but just altering my approach. Yeah. In terms of how to get loud punchiness. So well, kicks mm-hmm. are like tend to be very short. Yeah. You know, so you don't have like a lot of like big sign action going on yeah. in the average kick, at least for me. Mm-hmm. Um, so then when the sub happens, it's going to be a lot quieter before it hits all the limiting and things because I want it to. So you're just like uh, using not it. Not be the hitting punch. the limiters as much as everything else. Uh-huh. Um, but. Once it all gets limited, that sub is at zero, essentially. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I want to have my sub down at a level where when I push everything into a limiter, it is basically just coming right up to the limiter and just kind of grazing Just kissing it it or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) A little peck. Just a little little kiss on the limiter. Just a little hi. (laughs) Yeah. Hi. Oh, hey, I'm here. So so then, well, now this is an interesting question then around like... How do what what so if you're mixing for null or if you're mixing to that point, so then what are your what's like your uh see for me like or how I'm thinking about my chains at the point is the only thing I'm messing with that's outside of a normal convention of just like n- negative six, like I said, obviously you're mixing it up or down. I'm just I'm only using that as a template starting point, right? So kick negative six, snare negative six. To me, subs negative twelve, and then I like my hi hats are like negative eighteen. To you know, mm, mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. my hi hats yeah. are down lower yeah. to remove yeah. some oh, of yeah. the high and oh, wide. Yeah. That makes yeah. sense. And yeah. then my percussion is somewhere between like I don't know, it's either above or below that that region there. And then my mm-hmm. I've got like a drum bus and like my pads and all that other kind of stuff. But like, but the kick and the snare. Are kind of the loudest thing outside of a vocal that, but you're really sure. just trying yeah, to get yeah, the vocal yeah, to sit yeah. on top of stuff. So, my ma- by the time it gets to my master, that's where I'm kind of pushing things up. But I'm, I guess I'm not really like, and I and I kind of like my, I call them my dirty masters. It's like I push it to like a <laughs> negative right, one right, or whatever, right. and I'm like, yo, bros, how, <laughs> how's my master do before I actually send this off to some people right. that like can make the shit better? Yeah, um, but I'm not. I'm also not. You know, mixing. I guess I am, but I'm not. 
I just will send it off at, at some point to just oh, okay. double check the ears or whatever. Right, right. Mm-hmm. You know, so with better compressors mm-hmm. and shit one that thing I have or something in yeah, terms yeah. of getting vocals to sit on top. One thing that we've kind of like figured out not too long ago, I guess maybe maybe it was a while ago. I can't remember, but that seems to work every time. Is <laughs> my drums. And my music group, so my drums and then everything else that gets side-chained to the drums, that's not vocals. So that's basically bass, melodic, effects, basically everything that's not v- uh, vocals or drums. Those are all in, in a group getting s- 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 side-chained. Both those two things, the music and the drums, go to the pre-master. Yeah. And then vocals just meet everything at the master. Right. I just send them straight, so they're just on top yeah. of everything. It's a two track, right? Glorified right. two track, right? It yeah. basically turns music. And it seems to vocals. fucking. Then all I all I gotta do is make sure my control of the vocals is right and present enough, and they just, right. and, they just and then sit right yeah, on top. Like every you couple time. that with a little bit of like a like mid like multi banded like mid side chain of mm-hmm. the vocal to like any kind of melodic right. thing that it could be clashing with right to where it kind of just like ducks it a little bit for the vocal and then on top of that you're already smashing all of that music stuff together and then it's getting smashed together with the drums yeah. and then a vocal on top of that with a little bit of the ducking and it just sits right in there mm-hmm. it, yeah it's like it yeah, I've I've had it not work a couple times but as far as I know that's just cuz my vocal processing isn't that good but every time my vocal processing works out, I'm like, I would have, I, I don't know, I could not John, figure this out for years. John, why are you dropping Sorry to interrupt, F-N-Chat. Kayla, but. We sh- hey, John, something? what's up, dude? We are just talking about your, your plug-in. John, yeah. Yeah, what's the I plug-in? I named dropped you like three times already. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what's the plug-in that We are just talking about your erect shit, man. Yeah, John, I think I remember you telling me, stop effing us, John. Weren't you, uh, no, last time we were kicking going. it? Oh. Mm. What's F in oh, the what really? John, yeah. what, John, what the is the ones, plugin huh? uh, that you can chop by transients to make it easy to figure out your samples? What was that one? Because that shit's tight. Sort your samples or whatever. Yeah. Out of a mud Please pie. Please respond quickly. We don't, we're, the, the mud pie divider. We're, we're just talking. Silence. We're only an Split hour and a you? half into this podcast. Uh, now, well, so. so we were talking about we were talking about the ability to just like with your rack shit, just you know. You know, create like some fast triggers That's and just make mud pies Edison. for, you know, Was make, make a thousand snare drums in like two minutes with like a, a LFO. It's definitely and, yeah. not split. Was it Edison? I was talking to him about the, the DFAM or just uh, any of the mutant drums or something like that and just I like have. creating. Yeah, yeah. I don't see the chat anymore. Oh, you! So, oh, Sorry. there it is. It's there over, is there. over there. Was it the Edison? Was FL Studio Edison? way ahead of its time with Edison? I, so, John, what we're saying is I don't want to actually have to chop up all the stuff that I'm creating. I yeah. just want it to chop it for me at the transient and save it for me and make my life easy. Yeah. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure Dahlia does that. Is that what it's called? Dahlia? Isn't that that one? Edison I by Image. Yeah, so this is the FL I'm Studio sampler, which is crazy if it is Edison. I'm going to be mind blown. So you just then we drop this Oh, no, I think this is right. Is it you, right? You just drop it in, and then it's got a s- similar mode to Ableton where you can just... Uh, sample s- chop. Yeah, you sample chop it by fucking... Like for, for Trans- but it, but it does, does it, is whatever. there like a bulk export? Correct. It has that. Auto chop. I'm pretty sure it just you do that and then you export it and it exports them all Bro, separately. That's we need pretty this sure. so bad. There's I'm, a little set threshold. Yeah. Yeah. Does I'm, Bitwig, pretty sure I'm, I'm actually I'm surprised Bitwig hasn't done something like that. Hey, John, I would imagine Bitwig being like they're pioneering slightly behind on some that. new shit on that. Maybe. Or are we just maybe the don't only know about thing it. I open Ableton for is when I need to get audio to Stop mid. mid oh yeah, no, yeah, you're totally right. This is exactly what we're talking about. Image line export Edison. MIDI. Cool. Fuck. Yeah, I never do it. Such a banger move. Mud pies in two minutes flat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is like <laughs> control voltage. Yeah. Can right? you? Yeah, you can use <laughs> you can use that in other DAWs if it's Image Line because they yeah. like they have all their own. Yeah. yeah, then that's worth the money. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Just using it as a utilitarian mm-hmm. plugin to like print for shit. that, dude. Especially if we're that. making sample packs, because then we can bring it all in, cut them, squash them, make them all presentable, ready oh, to go, sure. and then you can just like, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, you got to normalize. 
Right, right. Also, imagine the infinite variable mud pie snare pack by Always 400. Where Dude, it's, seriously. It's literally 2,000 snares. It's all like, slightly different, but they're different. I, and it warps over time. All I want to do is just like throw on, it's like you can set just the triggers and, and like throw it through like Morphogene, Data Bender, and like, I don't know, the new Qubit Nautilus or something. And then, which is like this crazy. It's crazy delay, and then just come come back, and it's just like everything, you know, chopped within perfect, you yeah, know, perfect triggers or something. If you put like a, God, if you put if you had it like duck the the incoming signal or something like that, you could just have it perfectly mm. leveled. Mm-hmm. I think I saw like Andrew Wong. Do you guys ever pay attention oh, to yeah. that? Yeah, he's Andrew cool. Wong did something with with like plonk. Um, plonk? Yeah, this this IntelliJ <laughs> Plonk, and it was just like this kind of drum mod- module module, and I love he it. was just having it switch between the presets, but like messing with the uh, so it's like preset shredding, but right. you're not pressing mm-hmm. the mouse. It's just it's like oh. a, a being done with voltage. But. God, I would love a random oh. knob that would change the presets on a plug. Oh my for god! Me. Right? Yeah. You know another oh, thing too, like so bad. The, like the killer idea is like, please auto update my fucking VSTs. Oh my you god! Know? Why? Yeah. You, uh, scan my mm-hmm. VSTs and look for what is out of yeah. like out of for uh, yeah. real. Yeah. Right? Someone please invent that. Jesus, John's Steve working Duda. on it. John, Actually. John, invent that. All plugin, the guys, for the love of Christ. All the nerds behind the scenes in the music industry that support every single artist yeah. looking at you. We thank you, but come um, on, guys. Why do we? Why, this can't be manual. John in brings 2022. up a, a good point. Uh, oh, he, he Edison, would give us a good point. It has a recording mode that auto-records based on the incoming signal uh, while auto-pausing when silent, which is nice. slick. Oh, yeah, that's what Just we're talking about. Just remove silence. But, okay, right. so here's the difference. This is what we talked about when I was uh, over at John's. M recorder does the same thing and it's really good. Oh, okay. But with M recorder, when you hit pause on your space bar and it's not playing any more sound, it'll chop it there. Whereas Edison will record your tails until it's completely just zero silence. Oh. So not the M biggest recorder's thing, my, but my, keep my it in mind. Oh, yeah. right. Dude, M recorder's sick. It That's keeps the one going. I use. But I didn't realize that. John, John told me that and I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, because well. all the time that's a situation. I don't. It depends. I'm trying to think. Is I've been run into that a bunch recently, but that's the thing. That was a thing for sure for me. A lot of the time, it was like I'd hit stop and then it'd be like, <laughs> and it'd be like, a crazy uh, thing. Yeah. I see, wish I had that recorded. See, yeah. I think the next level to this plugin game too is like training oh, the wait. training the AI to learn what it is that I like, so that I don't have to listen to the 500 bullshit ones, so that yeah. it just like increases the speed. Oh, You're like, dude, that's make what... the hot shit and then. I like this type of thing, so <laughs> yeah. get rid of all the other shit. Yeah. That's well, bullshit. you might lose you know out the on some shit. Though? That's true, but if the AI is trained really well, and I, we're living in some sort of simulation, here's this thing you don't want, there. but you might be interested in. Like, XO, thank you. yeah, XO. Oh, we'll oh, just yeah. we'll, we'll just Dude, archive. Have, those. Do you know about XO? <laughs> uh, wait, XO. We we brought it up on here. Sample I think sorting. I think it's it's the sample sorting. Oh, that is that where you drag the mouse around? Yeah, and kind of like yeah, and it creates that like web of all the. Things. Dude, that's the start of what you're talking about. That that's the the pong version of right. what's happening right now. Find all. I, I use that the sonic uh, from that same company. I think it's Sononym to kind of it's like a sample mm. organizer thing where it's a Ooh, lot okay. easier. It's a lot okay. faster. Sononym from I haven't that heard same, of that. It's that same company. Um, it's really quick to kind of drag and drop into something, and you it organizes by some sort of intelligence and and. Uh, that categorizes CD. like tone. Yeah, sononym and length. Oh, sononym is a competitor. Hmm. I haven't heard of that one. I'm curious. I would like an AI to be built to just suck my dick for eternity, <laughs> and then uh, that's all. It, 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 <laughs> it, 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 fuck it, you, AI. It, I don't and capture give a fuck. and capture the sounds that you make so you can sample. No, yeah. it, no, just just sample, for my, sample just for my own so pleasure. Brilliant. <laughs> Pleasure. I'll make my own goddamn sounds. Thank you very much, bro. That God. shit on that that mi- all that mid journey shit, man. I've been playing Jesus. around with a lot of that stuff. It's oh, like, have you? Same. Oh, yeah. It's like next level, it's like fucked. Bananaville. Man. It's fucked. Up. Now they're doing video on it too. Yeah. Like It's like I, I haven't messed around with that stuff, but th- there's like all these like Google Collab notebooks. I'm they're, terrified, man. I'm so scared. 
I'm so scared. Well, we'll be fine. Let's not get into the fucking AI rabbit hole. Yeah, right I think uh, yeah. my bad. No, that's my fair. bad. No, we don't, we don't need to go there yet. <laughs> I, but I want to after yeah, the pod. I want to talk about it. Yeah. Well, because we we talked about it. I'm always the guy who brings it up, oh. and they're like, "Jesus, shut the fuck oh. up, dude." I think it's, I think it'll be interesting. <laughs> I do too. Yeah. People John says he he wants to come by next week and talk about AI. Mm. John, sorry, come sorry. by tomorrow. Sorry, John, we have someone on the We're podcast next week. So. Um, but we'll send you a. I do uh, have an idea for you coming on the podcast, though. We have a specific one. Do we? Yes. Well, nice. Well, guys, we've been going for an hour and forty-five minutes. Yeah, we should minutes. finish. Wow, we should dude, you're our longest episode. Oh, this am I really? Great. Yeah. Oh, cool. Longest one. I think so. Yeah. A, wow. a healthy yeah. amount of length that felt good. I had like six other questions. I sure. It. Well, I we got to say, we'll do another one. Cool. Yeah. Round two. Right, absolutely. Yeah, that'll be round yeah. two. Hey, you're a regular from now on if you want to be. Yeah. Ooh. Always. Ooh. Um, do you wanna do you wanna let the people of the interwebs know where they can find you? What you're up to? Yeah, so uh uh Plum Charlie on all the things. P L U M C H A R L I E. Um and uh, it's kinda like singer, songwriter, electro rapper trying to be John Hopkins and Apparat or something. So yeah. That's your thing. Cool. Yeah. Cool. He makes it up shit. Yeah. yeah, I've heard that's it for good for years now. That is, it that's is a good description. Really totally. Yeah, John but Hopkins trying to be on an the, apparat on the nose. <laughs> or, uh, but I'm. It's like at one part Elliot Smith, one part Andre <laughs> three thousand, and the other part like trying to be EDM, right? Like, right you know, right, hip hop yeah. dudes. Yeah. Wow, that's I love like, it. I love it. Fuck yeah! All, right, All folks. of the best things in the world. Yeah, man. That's <laughs> that's, that's what I'm trying to be, aspiring to be. Ooh. Thanks for uh, tuning in, folks. Yeah. If you're on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. Don't be a bitch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you're here on, on. Twitch, you aren't. Hit a bitch. the other button. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Whatever follow you're looking button. at us on, follow, subscribe, yeah. do it all. Bell notifications, whatever the fuck. You've been thing trained. Is. Comment. You've been trained by China. You know what to do. You know. You what guys to do. know what to do. Yeah. Also, check out our TikTok though. Yeah. We make check fun little TikTok. clips. Yeah. Always right. 100 official. Yeah. And build me an AI that sucks my dick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, folks. Bye, everybody. Bye.